This tutorial will show you how to create a realistic ripple simulation with Maximus P using a relatively simple algorithm. Our patch by the end of this tutorial will look something like this. Here are some example renders I've created using this algorithm, which can be accessed via my Patreon along with the final tutorial patch. As you can see, there is a lot of aesthetic ways in which this algorithm can be utilised. I'll give a brief explanation of how this works and we'll leave links to articles below. To understand how this algorithm works, we can look at the simulation in one dimension. This patch depicts the ripple's vertical velocity, or its change in height. Here, we can see that the ripple oscillates between three states. This means that for our simulation's vertical velocity, we only need to know the current state and its two previous states. Ripples or waves also lose energy over time, so we need to account for that by adding a damping effect to our wave. This next patch shows the simulation's horizontal force. Each point in the wave calculates its next height by taking the average height of the points to the left and right of it each time step. This pushes the ripple outwards in a realistic motion. Finally, when we add the horizontal force with the vertical force, we get a realistic looking representation of a ripple. We can create a three-dimensional ripple by simply adding two more dimensions to this simulation, as we'll see in this tutorial. First, we'll create our JIT world to render to. Enable floating, give it a size, initialize it as enabled with full screen anti-aliasing, and we'll set the background color to black and position it off to the side. Next, we'll add our frame rate GUI so we can see the speed it's rendering, and we'll use the frame rate as our metronome. After this, we'll create two matrices to hold our current and previous buffers. We only need one plane, which will act as a height map for the ripple. We'll set the type to float32, and we'll start with a small dimension size of 64 by 64. Next, we'll create a JIT gen called ripple, and connect this to our matrices. Inside this gem patch, we will apply our matrix algorithm to generate the ripple effect. We will connect our metronome to bang our matrices and use a gate so we can easily toggle our patch on and off. We'll start by naming our inputs and outputs so we don't get confused. We need to access the neighbouring cells of each cell being processed, and to do this, we'll connect the cell object to vectors, indicating the cells to the left, right, top and bottom neighbouring cells.
To access the value of these cells, we connect them to the nearest PIX object, which will sample their values. We connect the left inputs to our current buffer, as that is the matrix we need to sample. Next, we'll write an expression, which is the algorithm which will generate the ripple effect. Essentially, this algorithm takes the average of the surrounding cells of the current simulation state to give the ripple its horizontal velocity. We also subtract from the previous cell state to create the oscillating vertical velocity of the ripple. I'll leave a link to an article that describes this process in more detail. We then connect this to our first output, which will be the new state of our simulation. We then connect the first input to out2, which makes our original current state the previous state for the next cycle of the simulation. Next, we'll connect our outputs to our current and previous matrices, completing the feedback loop. Now we have the simulation set up, we need a way to add an initial value. We'll send a set cell message to the center of our matrix with a value of 1, which should set the ripple in motion. We can connect this matrix to a video plane to see the data rendered as a color matrix. So, we can see that it's working. We'll need to increase the intensity a bit. So we can see it's working but giving a sort of trippy visual effect, which is cool but not quite what we want. This is because ripples lose strength over time. So if we go back into our gen patcher, we can simply make a parameter which we'll call damp and set it to a value just under 1 to gradually reduce the intensity. And we'll multiply our new state by this value. We'll send a clear message to our matrices to reset them. And now you can see we're getting a nice ripple-like effect. We can change the bound mode of the nearest pix object to mirror so the ripples reflect off the boundaries of our simulation rather than travel through, which will give us a nice effect. Now, if we increase the dimensions, we can get a higher quality ripple effect, which looks more neat. At this point, you could create a whale of initializing random cells with random densities to create the effect of raindrops. But for now, let's look at rendering our simulation in three dimensions.
We'll create a jit.anim.drive object to control a camera object so that we can move around the model space with the WASD keys. We'll also change the dimensions back down to 64 by 64 for clarity. We're going to use the nerbs.gl object to render our simulation. First, we need to create a four plane matrix. This matrix will give us three planes plus an extra plane to adjust the weight effect of the nerbs object, which I'll describe in a second. We'll create another JIT gen and create a trigger to bang our NURBS matrix and also send our height data through. Inside the JIT gen, we'll use the snorm object to give us normalized coordinates between negative 1 and 1 that will act as the xy plane of our surface. The ripple data will be our z plane or our height map. We'll use the swizz object to make sure we only get one plane of data as now we're working in four planes. Lastly, we'll create a weight parameter, which we can adjust. Because the weight affects the xy planes, we also need to multiply our normalized coordinates by the weight to prevent it from affecting the size of our surface. Finally, we can create our NURBS object. As you can see, it automatically generates a random NURBS surface. Essentially, this object creates a three-dimensional grid of splines, which smooths our input data. If we change the poly mode to grid and show the control points, we can get a better understanding of what's going on. As you can see, the NURBS object is smoothly interpolating between the control points to get a smooth surface. If we increase the order, it increases the smoothness of the interpolation, but be careful as higher orders will also re result in slower frame rate as it requires more calculations to render. Let's send in our matrix of control points, which needs to be prepended with the control matrix message.
So we're getting some crazy data at the moment and might have to play around with a few things. We'll try reducing the intensity. We'll also increase the dimensions of our NURBS object. Personally, I've found that a dimension that is twice that of the control matrix works best without affecting performance too much. Let's also create a material so we can see some light and shadow. Now we're starting to get a 3D ripple, but it's looking very low poly. If we increase the order, we can get it looking more smooth. Also, if we decrease the weight, it will help smooth out the ripple. The dimensions didn't seem to change, so we'll send the message again. So now we're getting a quite nice looking ripple. Let's lower the damp to get a more realistic simulation. To finish up, we can add a cube map to our material environment to really bring out the fluidity and give it a more liquid style texture. So that's about it. There's a lot more interesting effects and rendering options, but I'll leave that to you to experiment. You can also get this final tutorial file along with some cool renders I've made on my Patreon if you'd like to see some interesting ways of using this simulation. Personally, I'd be interested to see how someone could control music with this algorithm. So if anyone has any ideas, feel free to drop a comment or hit me up on social media. Hope this was helpful and happy patching.